outward wrist turn, kodagaishi. Turn it out, push it in. Turn it out, pull it forward. Two different variations. The pins are almost similar, right? Drop, knee to the bicep, smash, palm to the floor and back up. Or launch, control the elbow, palm to the floor, elbow pressure. All right, when we look at how we turn the wrist to the outside, the most common view could come from, yeah, I reference Steven Seagal a, a lot, right? So an outward wrist turn known as kotagaishi, this is, this is the grip, right? So there's a pad here, there's a pad here, and if we make contact with that pad and put our thumbs behind, we can control the wrist and turn. I'm, I'm not pushing straight forward, this is a different technique. This is compound torque, this is in, and out, not always in, and we'll look at that in a second, but um, a simple technique to use this off of in self-defense is from a lapel grab. This is, I like to call this the, she's, she's asking for my lunch money. Her wrist is turned up. It doesn't make sense for me to try to turn in if she is putting her effort turning her wrist out. So thumbs come under, I grab the meat. I'm making a, a strong connection with my chest step with my foot and my body is actually doing this the bending of her wrist in and out and of course from here we step and sweep the leg like Johnny um, and we finish with basically finishing them on the ground shorty arm bar or something so as I have uh, released this grip or taken the initiative to, to get a cross grip I'm gonna simply take her down by torquing to the outside and dropping if I keep torquing she may just, you know, spin around. But if I lower, this is simply a takedown. As she goes down and I go somewhat of a knee on belly, I'm actually going to put my knee on her bicep and keep pushing until her pinky touches the ground. So if I just, this is kind of like an Americana with a torque. Yeah. Okay, so an outward wrist turn, takedown. I'm forcing her down. No need for her to do a complete aerial flip. Instead of just knee on belly and control, I'm gonna use my knee, kind of this inside pressure to go to her bicep as I continue putting her palm on the mat. Now I don't wanna let go here because she can turn her hand back out. And now this is gonna be a scramble. So the, the, the control should be that the palm is going towards the mat. Even if I don't have pressure on her bicep, because obviously that's painful just putting her palm on the mat is the technique. Okay, so that's a nice finish. And even from, from the ground, uh, framing or whatnot, Kodagaishi's here a lot. Yes, there's a simple uh, gooseneck wrist lock here, but if I turn it over and put her palm on the mat, there's the tap. Okay, we just, we just did a takedown, right? So the takedown literally allows us more control. The projection or the throw, and obviously she's not uh, as comfortable doing aerial break falls as um, someone that trains in Aikido, but with a crash pad, she can launch herself. She's further away from me though, right? So let's look at that again. Good break fall, by the way. But to launch herself, she's actually escaping. This is not, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that I won. I have a great technique. She launches herself. She could escape. So as I have this technique, a big circle, I technically could still try to do the same pin, but I've launched her further away. And that's uh, kind of one of my personal pet peeves is if I launch someone too far, I have less ability to control them. If it's by design to launch someone and take off running, that's okay. But if I want to pin, I'd rather than be straight down where I can control. Kotagaishi, again, typically is, is viewed as bending in and bending out. This, if you can even look at drawings, you know, many Aikido books, Aikido Jujutsu books, that's typical for Kotagaishi. 
but turning the forearm, turning the wrist out, doesn't have to be bent forward. And I'll give a good example of that. So from a single wrist grab, straight side, if I turn my hand up, I'm already turning her wrist outwards. I'm turning her wrist outwards. If I make a connection from a cross grip underneath, I have this meet. I could drive this forward to that same position, but I like to add a little bit more a little bit more pain by extending this forward. I love it. I just, when I hear someone make noise, you know the technique. Works. This is a painful technique. Uh, it's quick. It's almost like this gooseneck, easy to defend or easy to escape. When we turn it outside and bend it down, it's a lot more painful and harder to escape. And this is a great application from a straight, you know, same side cross or same side uh, wrist grab. My hand comes up, I meet this palm to the back of her hand, grab the meat of her hand for control. But as, as I start pointing the direction that I want to throw, you can see that this wrist actually engages the elbow, it engages the shoulder, ultimately that causes her hips to be unbalanced. And I'm going to take her down and allow her to roll out of this, but this could be a, a, a really big throw, very painful. So I can force her down, and we're kind of uh, in that same situation that we were in a minute ago. I'm on the back side. I could still push her elbow down and force, and that could be a pin. But we're going to look at the traditional pin off of this grab. So again, being easy on the takedown with this um, different type of kodagaishi, turning the wrist out, but instead of the wrist bending forward, bending backwards. I'll be nice on the takedown by simply dropping her, but I don't let go of this grip. And with the spinning motion, she's gonna feel inclined to keep rolling. So to prevent that, I need to block this elbow. But the way that we control this is by bringing the elbow straight out and try to keep her arm close to her face. And from here I can do, it's really an elbow lock, but if I allowed her wrist to turn out, you know, her elbow, I don't have as much control. So the, keeping this grip, stretching her palm to the floor and pressure on the elbow. This is a traditional pin in Daitoru off of uh, Kodagaishi from a single hand grab. Actually, you can do a double wrist grab. So the, the technique is off of grabbing both wrists. And this would be probably to prevent me from grabbing my sword. Um, simply rising and dropping, extending the elbow out. There's the tap, here's the pin on the elbow, here's the control on the wrist. So, you know, we have the uh, structure from our self defense where we engage the leg. We could just simply throw. I could just drop and push. There's also ninjutsu, the way that they use, use this is step, you know, changing levels and stepping offline, and I really like that. So if I had this, whether it was from a lapel grab, I broke the grip, I grabbed it from a punch, knife, whatever. Um, I'm gonna change levels and, and escape myself because she might try to punch here. So I've completely changed levels, moved offline, but it's still kodagaishi, right? Thank you for taking another look at a wrist series, this time the wrist turning out instead of in, uh, in the form of kodagaishi where we turn the wrist to the outside. Like this? Like that. She may say, like this? Like this? I'm not sure. What? Throw out. Jeopardy music. You can look that way and just launch yourself. Don't think about the pain, just escape from the pain. I'll make you there, make sure there's no pain. Look that way, dive over your own shoulder.
see. That was great. So let's try that again. Don't bring the paint. Wrist grabs. I'm causing it a release. Nice. But again, my preferred preference is to bring a straight. <laughs> She's in the in between. The in between. <laughs> Another video you should watch. You're grabbing my hand here, but you want to grab the meat, the thumb on the back. So if you just grab my wrist again, grab. I can pull out. If you grab and this is harder for me to control, then double hand comes in. You can force me straight here. Yes. Now you're pulling my hand underneath. You need to make my palm touch the floor. Thank you. Let's do the outside one. This was this was difficult. You would turn your wrist inside, almost like you're looking at a book or a mirror, right? So this is an old Japanese technique, looking at the mirror. And you're coming underneath here and grabbing. We do this in another one of our self-defense, right? So you go down your forearm, that. But if you grab and extend your, go ahead and squeeze, and extend this finger and point that direction. Yes. Ah. Yes. Spread it again. Straight grab. Your Look. hand comes up. Yep. Here. Yep. Here. Let <laughs> you try that pin. Maintain your grip so hand comes up. Grab underneath. Extend out. Maintain that grip. Uh, there's potentially a finish here, but straighten my arm out, get behind me. One hand on the elbow. Uh, do I like this one? Yes. And pull my arm continually out, away from my body. There you go. 